Hello, let me introduce myself. I'm Christina Hunt. I'm one of the math instructors here at Stark State. Today we're going to be looking at math, the mathematics portion of the AccuPlacer. Now, for the AccuPlacer, the math part section consists of two parts. The first is one that's called Quantitative Reasoning, Algebra, and Statistics. The second one is called Advanced Algebra and Functions. All right. This, we're going to first off look at the quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics. This is more of the basic math portion. All right, you're going to be looking at things you possibly would have learned in algebra and geometry topics like this. So you're looking at you know, your rational numbers, your ratio and proportions, exponents, basic algebraic expressions, some linear equations got in there, some applications, some basic pieces from probability or descriptive statistics, and some general geometry concepts. So things that you would have learned at the beginning of your high school career. We're going to do several examples here just so you get a feel for what basic kind of things are in here. The examples did come from AccuPlacer itself. So these are some of their example problems. This first one starts off as just a basic problem. Okay, you're just going to have to simplify a fraction. All right, so this is testing really, if you look at it, the big thing this is testing is the concept of my, do I know how to deal with negative values? All right, so you should note right off the bat here, for this one, we have two negatives sitting side by side. Anytime I have two negatives, we know that two negatives make a positive. So that means my problem changes to a negative 6 plus a 9 over 8. Then I have to remember my rules for dealing with unlike signs. So that means that if I have a negative 6 plus a 9, I'm going to subtract the two values keep the sign of the larger. So a negative 6 plus a 9, so 9 minus 6, gives me 3. The sign of the larger would be the positive value. And then the 8 still goes on the bottom. So my answer to this one would be B. We started off easy. This next one is something you should have learned in numerous math classes. It's also found at the beginning of every statistics course in the world, and that is asking you to find the population mean of a group of countries. Now, anytime we're trying to find a population mean, that means that the first thing we're going to do is we have to find the sum, and that symbol means sum, of all of our x's, then we're going to divide by the number of items that we have. So the first thing I have to do is find the sum of all these values, which if I add all these up, would give me a 318.3. Then I'm going to divide that by how many particular countries we have here. And notice we have one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to divide by five, which is going to give us a 63.66. Now, there's not a 63.66 here. We have to round our answer to the tenths place. So remember, that means we're going to look at the guy next door. If he's five or more, round up. If not, keep it the same. So our answer in this case becomes 63.7, which means for this one, C would be our answer. Now, things like this. Okay. All right. 
we know that two lines are given by the equations above. We need to know the value of the y-coordinate of the point of intersection. All right, this means that what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take this x equals 3 and substitute it into the equation above. So our original equation was this. Now we're going to substitute in the 3. So I have 9 minus 2y such being equals equals 15. Now we need to solve for the y. So that means we're going to subtract a 9 from both sides. So I have negative 2y equals 15 minus 9, 6. We're still dividing by negatives, which means my answer here would be y equals 6 divided by a negative 2 or negative 3. Okay, so you're going to see a lot of problems within this section that are going to be more basic type things. Like I said, algebra, geometry, things like that. For the advanced algebra and frac and functions, you're looking at things that you would have seen in an algebra 2 class, um, a trade class, things like this. All right, so you're looking at your linear equations, applications. We're factoring now. We're dealing with quadratics. We're dealing with functions. We're dealing with radicals and rational equations, polynomial equations. Okay, you're dealing with your exponential and logarithmic equations, some general geometry concepts, lots of trig can be in here. So you're going to see the things that you would have learned in some of these later math classes. All right, in terms of examples for this, all right, you're going to see things like this, where we're going to have to find what thing is equivalent to something else. All right, now one of the things I can tell you as you do a problems like this is you can work through things and you can start eliminating things that you know right off the bat would not work. So for example here, I know I'm going to start with, I have to multiply these two values together, the x and the x squared. Well, when I do that, then what's going to happen is an x times an x squared is going to give me an x cubed. So I know that this answer right here that doesn't have an x cubed in it definitely will never work. So that one's gone. All right. I also know that I have to take an x times a 3x, which is going to give me an x squared. But if you look here at c, there's no x squared, so that guy's definitely gone. Okay, so now I only have two things that I have to worry about. So let's actually solve this problem. Okay, so like I said, this is your, basically this is just foiling. Okay, so we're going to go x times x squared, which will give me x cubed. We're going to go x times 3x, but remember this 3 is negative, so this will give me a negative 3x squared. We're going to go x times 2, which is going to give me positive 2x. Now we have to do the same thing to the 7. So we're going to go 7 times x squared gives me a positive 7x squared. We're going to go 7 times that negative 3x again, which gives me a negative 21x. And we're going to finish up with 7 times 2 which gives me a positive 14. 
So now let's simplify. Okay, so we only have one x cubed, but notice here you have an x squared here and an x squared here. So we have to combine these two guys. So a negative 3x squared plus a 7x squared. So I have a negative 3 plus a 7. So we're going back to those negatives again. So I'm going to subtract, keep the sign of the larger, which gives me a 4x squared. Then I notice that I have a 2x and a negative 21x. So those guys are going to go together. So it's going to be 2 minus 27, which gives me 19. Keep the sign of the larger. So I have a negative 19x, and I finish up with a 14. All right, so if I look, oh, B would be my answer there. All right, this guy is getting into your basic functions. All right, so when you're dealing with your functions, so we know this is what the function says. We want to know what is the value of g of 12. So if we start it off with this guy, When we write things like this, this means that any x that would happen to be in the equation is going to be replaced with a 12. So I have a 12 plus an 8. Now remember that everything in math basically boils down to order of operation. All right, so order of operation says I have to do the parentheses first. So that means I'm going to add these two guys together. So that means I'm going to take 12 plus 8, which gives me 20. All right, that 3 is multiplying. So now we're going to go 3 times 20, which gives me 60. So my answer there is 60. Now looking at this, Okay, right away, if I would have broadly wanted to, I would have noticed everything in here I have is positive, which means that finding an answer that's a negative doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so it's always important to get rid of the things I don't have to consider when I'm taking a test like this. Okay, this guy. I liked this guy in part because I can start really simplifying existence by just looking at what am I dealing with here. Okay, so I'm looking for something equivalent to this 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. All right, well, I know by basic foiling rules, I'm going to end up having to multiply the 6 and this 12 together. Well, I know a negative 6 times a positive 12 is going to give me a negative 72. Okay, but I'm looking for a negative 24, which means this guy is definitely out. So is C, because he's also going to end in a negative 74. Okay, now we're down to these two guys. Okay. So let's stop for a second and look at what we can do here with them. So this first one is this. So if I do FOIL, that would give me an x squared minus a 4x plus a 2x minus an 8. Well, right off the bat here, I'm seeing a problem because when I combine these two guys, I'm going to get a negative 2x. But my problem said I want a positive. So that means this guy 
it's also definitely out which kind of leaves me with one person and it's always a good thing just double check to make sure your brain and and your process here are equivalent so I have a negative 3 times this so once more if I do foil it's an x squared plus a 4x minus a 2x minus an 8. I can combine these two guys to get a 2x. Now we're just distributing this 3 which gives me a 3x squared plus a 6x minus a 24 which is what I actually want. Okay, so that just kind of helps verify that I do have the correct answer here. All right, one more here. All right, this guy. Okay, I need to know which of the following values satisfies the equation. Okay, well, if you're looking at this here, there's a few things right off the bat we can get rid of. All right, for example, if we started with a positive 7, well, that's going to give me a 49 plus a 35, which is definitely larger than 5. So I know that guy isn't going to work. For the next one, I'm going to get a 9, but I already am subtracting a 9, which means I'm only going to be left with that 5 times 3, 15. That's not going to work. Okay, if I do the negative 2, hmm, that could possibly work, but notice something. If I do a negative 2, I would be ending up with negative 2 squared, which is 4. But then I go 5 times a negative 2 gives me a negative 10, and I had a negative 9. Oh, massive negative answer there. That's not going to work. All right, so let's see if the guy I think is going to work is going to work. So we have a negative 7. It's squared. Plus, we have 5 times a negative 7 minus a 9. Well, I know a negative number squared is going to be a positive number, so it's going to be a positive 49. A 5 times a negative 7 is going to leave me with a negative 35 minus 9. Okay, well, a 45 minus a 35 minus a 9 leaves me with 5, which is what I wanted here. So this would be my answer here. All right, sometimes the process of elimination and just Thinking kind of mathily will help us along here. All right, after you get your score, please note, okay, where you go in math depends not only on your test score, but also on your degree program. All right, the key though is you want to score as high as possible because you do want to be able to finish up your math without doing a bunch of extra remedial math courses. So don't just go in and go, ah, math, whatever, okay, and blow it off. You really want to score the best you can, all right? One thing that I encourage people to do is once you take the, math, the Accuplace or Math portion, you see what your test score is, you know what your degree program is, talk to your advisor about what courses do you need to take. All right, that way you get started on the correct road. Please don't take the math and just kind of blow it off and I'll do it later because that does end up with problems in the future. If you're looking for how exactly am I going to prepare for this, here's some basic resources. AccuPlacer does have an entire section and a website set up with practice problems that you can do. I strongly encourage going there. All right. Also, 
Stark State set up a math help that will help you get through everything. And another one, if you're just looking for some general, I need some help on some things, is to look at Khan Academy. Good luck on your math test and high scores.